Hello and welcome yeah. back to Butari. Yeah, Ship Happens Adventures. A lot of people have been asking if we're going to change the name of the boat. I don't think we are. I would, but I'm just not very imaginative with <laughs> names. I don't know calling something stupid. <laughs> right, so what we're doing today, we, first job. Yeah, we've got a lot to do. We need to get in the water, like, as soon as possible. Yes. But we've got a lot of jobs to get yeah. done. So we have found someone to fix our shafts and rudders. So yeah. they are away at the moment getting done. Yeah. So they should be back in a couple of days, which is yeah. exciting. Props are getting done next week. Yeah. Even more exciting. Even so more that exciting. is all the damaged areas yes, done. sorted out. Yeah. Well, what we want to do is check for damage on the hull, which we haven't done. So I want to remove the P bracket on the starboard side. Yeah, make sure there's no fiberglass yes. cracking or anything because that took quite a hit yeah and that was the bent shaft one so let's have a quick look to see if there's any damage around that area let's go and then we've got loads of other things to do as well so the top of the p brackets here so we've got to whiz these six nuts off then hopefully should be away at the bottom It'd have been better if I remembered my socket set today, wouldn't it? So we very, very stupidly loaded all the van up full of tools yesterday, ready for all the jobs that we've got to do on the boat today. And then we got in the car this morning. Halfway home, we realised. <laughs> yeah, we were an hour into the journey, we rent, we've left all the tools in the van. So we're working with very, very limited tools today, so bear with us. It's got shims in it. It's shimmed. Wow. That's obviously to adjust the alignment. Mm. They just look like amazing plates. They are. <laughs> so we've just pulled this and apparently this is where you keep your spare razor blades. In case you're out on the water and you want to cut something. <laughs> Did you get any rope tied around your profit? <laughs> yeah, so you go the roof. Just pull the P bracket, just pull the bolts on the P bracket, love. Right here. Wow, that's random, isn't it? No, no, it? but it makes sense though, doesn't it? Because like the whole, all the fiberglass moulds are different and you've got to shim these to line up with that. So, okay, so we'll have to realign these, that's good. Okay, so there's no obvious, there's no signs of damage actually. No. No cracking, just needs a clean up. Yeah, so we basically pulled all this just to check to see if there's any cracks, so. Looks good, doesn't it? Just obviously yeah. needs needs to sand up and get all the old glue off. Yeah. Good job. So it needs a bit more of a clean up, but there's there's definitely no crack into the fiberglass or anything on that, so that's that's a bonus. So one problem we found on the boat is that the toilet doesn't really flush obviously we're on the hard and we're not using the toilet yeah. uh, but obviously this is the perfect time now to get everything assessed and working this always happens at home when Gemma's used it <laughs> <laughs> right so, so it's a bit of a thingy job isn't it it is when you're like hold on we've got a box of gloves somewhere let's put some gloves on because this is i've cleaned the whole toilet and the whole bathroom yeah it's not had anything in it we've basically we've moved some water through it but it takes ages to get it through so what we need to do is take the pump off take it apart 
You might find a blockage in there. Yes, and know. we've also got a holding tank, and we don't know whether that's full or empty or not, so let's get the Mingan jobs yeah. done of toilets. So I think before we start actually like taking toilets apart and stuff like that, there's a Y junction. Yes, which we don't probably know how that works. Obviously, you can turn it to go to the to the holding tank, can't you? Or to go overboard, or maybe an off. I think there's three positions. The toilet pumps, but it's very tight. And then there's like a little tiny trickle, just obviously this is just fresh water. A little tiny trickle just coming outside. Yeah. Uh, when we've when we've turned the valve to the outside, but it's like this. It's blocked. So let's before we start dismantling the toilet, let's, let's check go further, pipes further downstream first okay. for blockages. Okay. And as well, we did actually price up a new toilet. <sighs> that was about 700 quid. That, it's a really good toilet, yeah. that one. So we don't really want to mess with it. Well, we don't want to replace it, do we? Right, so let's get to our Y valve and our holding tank, which is all under the carpet. So that's the holding tank down there. Here. And then we have this Y valve. So we think at the moment that is to the outside. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah, this pipe goes outside, so we're thinking that this points towards the direction you want it to flow. Or you can turn it that way, and then it could flow that way, I don't know. But basically, everything comes from here, so everything you want to get rid of goes from there, so you have to put it in there while you go out. So if we take each end off, yeah. and run some fresh water through, make sure there's no blockages. Hello? Blow down it! <laughs> I can see daylight, so that's a good sign. Right, let me go get some water. Oh, it smells very funny, doesn't it? Right, so there's no blockages upstream that we can see. So basically what we need to do now is trace this pipe, which goes up to that Y valve. But to get to that pipe, we need to take this pump off anyway. So let's just pull the pump. Hopefully there's not loads in it that's going to come back at me. But there's everything slackened off before we um check out plumber out. I hope this isn't full of poo. Alright, so there's one of them. Okay. Right, so I think what we need to do is get a hose pipe from the top and just run it through, make sure all that pipe's clear. Then we'll give all this a good pump in a bucket of water. And then it doesn't look like much wrong with it at the moment. Right, so the pipe that goes from the, the toilet to the Y valve, I'm not going to show you it. I'll show them. It's full of toilet stuff. So, blockage. <laughs> so, hang on, it's coming out. <sighs> Don't flush stuff down the toilet that hasn't come out of you. I'm actually really shocked that Simon is doing this because Simon doesn't like toilets and every time like we used to go camping and stuff like that in, in the camper van, Simon would never ever empty the toilet. So this is quite brave of him really. Somebody's got to do it. I didn't see you queuing up to do it. <laughs> Come on, dude, it's pretty full, you know. Um, Hoover? No, because then I'll have to put me over in the bin. Have we got any like long pokey sticks? So we almost bought a new toilet the other day, so it's probably a good job we well it wouldn't have fixed the problem though, would it? So this pipe is just solid full of toilet stuff um so i think the best thing to do is just actually take the pipe out and take it outside give it a bang in the bin and flush it and clean it through that way because when when we can't reach everything that's down there <sighs> let me just see if i can see if this clip clipped anyway It's quite the, the hole down there is quite tight, so 
and it's the wrong direction that I'm sort of pulling at. Ooh. Right, just hold on, because I am getting it out now. Now I've got the pipe a bit higher. Okay. So before you actually push it through, give us a minute. So we can't, I can't get me screwdrivers down anymore to get all the tissue out. We can't get the pipe out because it's a nightmare around the bends and where it is and it'd be a nightmare to get it back in. We don't really want to start flushing water down there in case it starts spewing up stuff everywhere. So we've got the hoover. So let's put the hoover on the pipe and see if I can get the stuff to come up where I can reach it and get it out. So yeah, that uh, that did the trick. <laughs> so we've gave it all a good clean. That pump, haven't you? I have, yeah. So I'm not quite sure if that's meant to look like that. It almost looks like it's that way. Just turning yeah. Yeah. So this did have to come apart. So I'm missing that goes that way because it's a one-way valve. This goes. You thought I was having a wee then, didn't you? Right, let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. Cool, so that's that's the only fresh water at the moment, we're just obviously pumping it through, but that works well. So that'll go below the water line. Obviously you can't pump out in marinas, but at least we know that system works when we're out on the how at sea. Another thing we've got to test is these sump pumps. So that's the shower. So basically all the shower water goes into a little sump and then it gets pumped out. So I've got to get Gemma to switch the switch on, Gem. Switching on. So that's got a good steady flow on sir. So we need to get this cutlass bearing out. While this is here in the workshop, it'd be a lot easier than working under the boat. So I've made like a little, I've turned this on the lathe. It's basically just shy of two inches, because that's what we know the inside diameter of the P-bracket is. Then we're going to put... some threaded bar for it. The only thing I could find was a piece of jaunty old tube. So we're going to put that on there for now. Hopefully this tube doesn't collapse. And then a big, big set of washers. So our plan is tighten this. That'll pull that washer through and hopefully... Definitely. Dead easy. Move the cutlass bearing. <laughs> right. What could possibly go wrong? That a negative. Ah, so they did. They went all the way through. Look. I wasn't expecting that. Right, so hopefully the bearing should come out a bit easier now there's not on there holding it back. Okay. Yeah, it's moving.
So yeah, the, the rope cutter fitted to the P bracket was screwed all the way through the cutlass bearing. This is the first time we've ever removed a cutlass bearing or seen a cutlass bearing. <laughs> in our hands, have we? Yeah. Um, I've, never, I've known about them, I've read about them in books. We've watched other YouTubers fit them. Yes. But we've never seen the rope cutter fittings no. screwed all the way into the cutlass mm. bearing. So I think someone might have... But the cutlass bearing definitely wouldn't have spun. No. But... I don't think I don't That's think not right, right, is it? Right, no. So yeah, uh, well, I'll do some research so we'll, onto that we'll one. We'll have to shorten the bolts on the on the rope cutter, I think. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, that was one down. So at least now we can get all this cleaned up in the comfort of the workshop because it's absolutely peeing down outside. Yeah. And that has just given us so much experience that when we go back to the boat and take the other one off, yeah, we need, we know what we're doing we now. We definitely need more. Bigger thread anyway, because we're sort of damaging the nuts and the stuff like that. Look at that. It's like, yeah. So. So let's see if we can clean this up. Ugh. Will it fit in there? Yeah. Right, let's give that a little sandblast. Right, so while Gemma's been sandblasting, I've been making a tool because we want to be able to line our P-bracket, don't we? So we want to line the P-bracket so then it lines up with where it meets the engine. Because otherwise, if it's off slightly, it'll wear the cutlass bearing, which we don't want that. So I had a brainwave. You might already do this, I don't know. So I've got like a laser, a laser bore sighter, which is basically for aligning your scope on your gun. So you put that down the bore with your gun, where that points, you align the scope to where the laser goes. I thought we, we could actually use it for aligning our shaft. So what I've done, I've got some Aroco. So I've machined up. This should hopefully fit perfectly inside the P-bracket. Then I've drilled a nice precision hole down the middle of it. So then to mount the, the laser bore sighter, I think it's called. So now you can see the laser pointing over there. And then we turn the lathe on. And you can see it ever such slight run out, but I'm quite happy with that. Cool, so that fits quite nicely. Where's our laser going? There you go. <laughs> well, I've not finished sandblasting it yet. So. No, but basically now, because we can see the laser up on the wall there, we can basically move this a degree that way, a degree that way, we can shim it up that way. I don't know, I just think it's good to have them bang on. It'll just make it easier when we're yeah, fitting it instead of guessing. <laughs> Which I should use. <laughs> Subscribe to follow this adventure and come back next time to see what else we do to get this boat back into the water.